We are all experiencing an unprecedented time in our lives right now. The level of uncertainty, anxiety, and fear can be overpowering. As we learn to navigate in our new world, all doing our part, whether it be social distancing, staying home, and abiding by federal guidelines, there are so many on the front lines who are battling a war against an invisible enemy. Being on the front lines can place a person's physical and mental health in jeopardy. A team of professionals has come together and created a program called Resilient Minds on the Front Lines to bring tools, knowledge, skills, and instruction to assist in a time of need. This team is dedicated to helping those who help others. On today's webcast, our guest speakers are husband and wife team, Chris and Lacey Wolf. They teach us how to incorporate movement in our daily routines and talk about the incredible benefits that physical activity can have on our physical and mental well-being. Your hosts for today's webcasts are Master Resiliency Instructor Michael Pellegrino and Dr. Kate Tumulty felice Professor of Education and Psychology and Coordinator of Education Programs. Resilient Minds on the Front Lines was created to bring you 15 minutes of hope in a world turned upside down. The topics in our webcast are all meant to help those on the front lines help themselves and others. Today, husband and wife team Chris and Lacey Wolf explain why physical activity is so important for frontline workers. Being a frontline family, Chris and Lacey know the challenges faced every day with raising children, managing finances, and keeping our family safe and healthy. Physical activity is the best way to deal with the stresses of life. They provide us with 10 tips to get more physical activity into our daily routines. Be safe, be healthy, be resilient. Hi, we are Chris and Lacey Wolf, and we're a first responder family living right outside of Austin, Texas, and we are so excited to be a part of the series. We're going to be talking to you about physical resiliency today, and we're going to really dig into strategies to help you move more and the importance of physical activity. Physical activity is our background. We both have degrees in kinesiology from Texas A&M University. Lacey's got a master's degree in exercise science. We also have over 14 years of experience training the U.S. military and first responders, and we have a training company called Forge Resilience. Well, we don't just talk about this stuff. We live it. I'm a firefighter, and we try to incorporate all of these things that we're going to tell you about in our daily activities and our daily routines. Yeah, we have the same challenges as all frontline employees. We have a family. We've got two kids. We've got a 15-year-old and an 11-year-old, a freshman in high school and a, and a fifth grader. Uh, we have two boys, and I'm working from home. Chris is going to work every day. So as we talk through these things, we are trying to live them. And again, we experience the same challenges that you all do um, out there on the front lines. When we're dead, we're not saying that it's easy. And to keep it as simple as we can, we're just going to give you 10 tips that you can do to incorporate more movement in your daily routine. Before we go into the 10 strategies or 10 tips, let's talk about why physical activity is so important for frontline workers. Absolutely. So if you're a police officer, a firefighter, a first responder in any way, you know that it's important to be physically fit because we got to pick things up, we got to you know, be strong, we got to move quickly. But one of the benefits that a lot of people don't realize that comes with that movement is it's the best way to deal with stress, whether it's some kind of traumatic event or a stressful call. Um, when you move, it's your body's natural way to release that stress. So if you're a frontline worker and this is something that's new for you, you can incorporate these tips to help relieve the stress that we're all facing now in this pandemic. If you're a family member and you're home with your kids, you can also use these tips to yes. take care of yourself <laughs> so that you can be a Take a care better, of your frontline worker. Yeah, take care that's of your right. frontline worker. So let's kick it off. Here's the first one of our 10 strategies you can use to start moving more. Number one, have a routine. Figure out when is the movement going to fit into your life and write it down somewhere in a planner, put it up on a board. If you're going to be moving with a group of people, with your family, make sure that everybody agrees on that time. For us, it's work to get the kids up at 745 and everybody goes downstairs and is ready to go by 8 a.m. And the first thing we do is our movement. Strategy number two, write it all down before you go to sleep the night before. So we wake up in the morning, like it's early, no one really is motivated to do anything. We've already written down what exercises we're gonna be doing. So the work's almost halfway done. Now we just gotta go out and do it. Number three, remember that 
early in the morning, you have more willpower than you do as the day goes on because your brain hasn't had to make that many decisions yet. So the earlier in the day you get your movement in, the more likely it's going to happen, especially if, isn't, if it isn't an established habit in your life. So uh, first thing in the morning is usually easiest to establish that, again, because you haven't exhausted your brain yet. Number four, move together as a family. So we talked about the stress that we're all facing. Our kids are facing the same stress. It's important to get them involved in this movement as well, make the whole household run better, and that way you're better able to do your job. If you don't have a family, and say you're, you got a fire family like I do, or another group of roommates, something like that, if you get everybody on board, it's a lot easier to, when you're supported than when you're just trying to make these changes on your own. Number five, on the other side of that coin, you may want to get out and do movement by yourself and get away from the family, um, which is a great way to just get a little brain break, get away from whatever's going on, whatever's stressing you out, especially if you're living in close quarters with the people you love the most. Sometimes you can drive yourselves crazy. So getting out for a walk or a jog or whatever you need to do to get some space can be a great way to get that mental, mental health back so you come back and you're a better version of yourself. Number six, do something that you enjoy doing. If you're about a million miles away from putting on running shoes and going for a jog, then don't do it. That's not what we're talking about. Find something else that you like to do. If you, if you like to dance and you're missing out on the nightclubs, this is a great opportunity. Crank the music in your living room, put your clubbing clothes on, get out there and move for about 20 or 30 minutes. Boom, there's your exercise for the day. Number seven, reinforce how good it feels during the movement and then afterward. You will notice that after you, after you exercise, you feel different than you did before. And the more you reinforce that, the more the brain starts to associate the movement with the reward that you're getting from the movement and the more you want to do it. Number eight, use music as a way to motivate yourself. I love music uh, when any chance I get where I can put headphones on and just blast music. It gets me fired up. It gets me uh, way more motivated to get out and get moving. Laces sometimes make fun of me. Sometimes it takes me longer to make my playlist than it does to actually do the exercises, but that's what I enjoy. Mm -hmm. Number nine, get creative with your equipment. Uh, if you think about it, you probably have equipment all over your house that maybe you haven't ever thought of as exercise equipment. If you have a chair, you can do dips. If you have a water bottle, you can do curls. So um, Texas Department of Public Safety actually put together a great webinar on this topic called the Unconventional Workout Webinar that I would encourage if you're looking for ways to be creative and you don't, you don't know what to do, check that out. It's a free resource for everybody and it has a PDF along with it. Even if you don't have time to watch the webinar, you'll get a lot of those tips straight through just reading the the handout and we're using those tips um, I found out a lot of things that I wouldn't have thought of before um, to use just every day around the house stuff all right last one use a reward system just like you deserve a reward for making it to the end of this video you deserve a reward for every time you move and work out every day uh, I'm not talking about donuts or ice cream I'm talking about something else that you like to do whether it's watching like your favorite episode of something on TV or taking a bubble bath, just wait until after you've gotten your exercise in to do that. And pretty soon your brain will start to associate that reward with the movement. That's it. Thanks so much for watching the video. From our family to yours, we want to say thank you to all the frontline employees out there that are keeping our country running. We couldn't do what we're doing without you. And we're so grateful for, for those of you who are out there putting your lives on the line uh, to take care of us. Stay safe. And keep moving. I'm Dr. Kate Tumulty Police. Thanks so much, Chris and Lacey, for sharing with us your expertise and insight regarding exercise. And not only the physical benefits of exercise, but also the social benefits as well. Resiliency is our ability to bounce back after adversity, and it affects us on a neurobiological level, a physiological level, and a psychological level. So too does exercise and the benefits of exercise as they create an important mind-body connection which supports us physically, mentally, emotionally, and socially, and helps us improve our well-being in each of these areas. 
when we improve these, we also mitigate stress more effectively. We reduce our maladaptive response to stressful situations and conditions. We create positive habits. And in creating those, we build new neurological pathways, new habits of the brain, if you will. So there's a couple things that happen to our neuroplasticity that are important. Not only do we build healthy habits that are reinforced as we reward them, so as we exercise and we increase those feel-good chemicals in our brain, the reward and pleasure center of our brain likes that and seeks to do that again, to create a new connection and be able to feel that again. Additionally, in doing that, when we improve that blood flow and we are consistent in our exercise, we produce new neurological connections in our brain. So we have that neuroplasticity that changes the actual makeup of our brain and makes it be more effective and support more exercise. Another way that Chris and Lacey discussed that helps us to reinforce exercise is to make it a social activity, to get important social support that we know can be part of our resiliency as well, establishing a system of support when we do face hard times. And we can do that through exercise too, as they mentioned within their family or with friends or coworkers. Whether you exercise with other people or by yourself or whatever works best for you, you're reinforcing a healthy habit that helps your brain function better, but also your mind and your body and your spirit. All of these things helps you help you help others. That's our goal here really is to give you tools and support in helping you take care of yourself and be more resilient and to help those around you. Thanks, Chris and Lacey, for helping us do that. And thank you for being with us today and thinking about your own health and well-being. Be safe, be healthy, be resilient. Thank you. During the COVID-19 pandemic crisis, your mental health is vital. Please see the resources listed here as well as on our website at onthefrontlines.us. You are not alone.